wanted to do something different actually. I wanted to perform my original songs in life. So when I you know get to that peak, I can always perform live standard professionally and that was how I got started. Over the years it, it, it took me time to get used to the, you know, all the line and everything, healing people, you know, getting money because I started with you know, my own money. Money I saw for presentation I put into music. And all in all, thank God and bless God for the growth. And where we are today has not been easy for us to get. Uh, let me take you back a bit to your growing up here. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Okay, I was born. I okay. I, I grew. I was born in Osho. I grew up in Ageke, then moved to many Osho the Ageke before we now upgraded to where God wants us to be. The schools attended. Okay, I my primary school was D and D Osho Primary School. Then I moved to. Fobi my school and from Fobi my school I moved to Government Senior College, I did it. Then from that University of Illinois, I studied physics. And with this physics, I got said no, broadcasting and music. Now, how did you come then, about that as a physicist? Find yourself. Uh, I'm a science when I was in secondary school, I was really brilliant. At some point someone said, ah, she's a talkative, you know, I'm always here and there. I was the assembly prefect anyways from my GS to my SS class. So when I was going to write an exam, I performed well. They said science, she has to be in science class. I really wanted to be in the art department or the commercial department, but my academic you know results want me to be in the science class. So when I finished, I wanted to do biochemistry. My mom wanted me to do medicine. I wanted to do biochemistry. And after the exams, I did pretty degree anyways. After the exams, I found myself in the physics department. And that was how to do it. Okay, and let me take you back a bit. Um, growing up in Agege and Ocean, those are two notorious places, quote and unquote. Does it have a way of influencing your brand of music? Uh, not really, because uh, if you see me perform some songs, you feel, ah, like, there's this girl just came out from London or America or Canada, you know, but growing up in a gay gay did not affect my kind of music, because growing up there is just where God brought me to, because that's where my parents had, they are based, not anymore, anymore, but, and even growing up, at Agege. When I tell people I grew up in Agege, they tell me uh, that uh, you're looking British, posh, because anyways, then to really don't go out. I hardly go out because my mom is mm -hmm. overprotective, but she knows the environment we are in. Okay, let's talk about um, the Madiba brand. How did you come about that studio, Madiba? Okay, um, the Madiba came up in the studio when I was recording a particular song. We named the song Playboy. It's all about, you know, you know, guys break the heart of ladies, and my the name I started with was more delicious. I wanted to use my Ricky at some point. I recorded when we googled the name, we, we discovered I think there was a lady using the Arike name, and I wanted a different name, a unique name, and I don't want to use my real name. So I we were in the studio. I was you know trying to do my I was laying my my name. I was using more delicious like more delicious. So my producer was like, ah, the name is too long ago. And I'm like, ah, we told them, I'm a diva, I'm a diva, like, I'm a diva. And it's like, that was not bad. And that was how we now said that, okay, I'm a diva is long, like, my diva, like, I'm a diva. That was how the name came about today. When we started life and so randomly just come and said, bro, you sing so well. But when they meet me in person, I'm a shy person, you know? So meeting me sit down in the corner, folding my hands, you look at this gentle girl. When I was stage, it's like, wow, it was really a queen. And that was how the queen came to my diva. I am queen my diva. Like that. But even way back deeper life church, you know how deeper life church wire is. Maybe let me say that was where I got um, I got to know music because then I played the violin. I played the violin, you know, you need to know the rudiment of music. And you know, with deeper life church will make you do soprano, 
make you do auto, you do treble, you do tenor. So we have different kind of. I would just say I I I, I learned the rudiment of music in that church. When I entered university, I migrated to regime as per you know school life and all. So I've never been a celestial member and. I like the church, the very good church, but I'm not a celestial. So what's next for my Okay, we're working on uh, a new album. I have an album which I have a, a party experience mistake, more like a mistake. Like we have all sorts of songs, but I'm presently working on my own solo album, like an original album, songs from Queen Madiva. And with the management, I guess management have some other plans, you know, like uh, interstate tour, intercountry tour. And I know, as I'm saying it now, they are listening, so they know, <laughs> they know the less things to do for them. Yes, I was going to ask you about competition. I noticed that um, for the generation that you belong to now, the uh, competition is a bit intense. Not not necessarily young sector alone, but generally across the entertainment industry. Everybody's trying to outshine the other and all that. So how do you see the whole uh, competition or the competitive nature of music that's it's very young area? Okay, there's one thing I tell people, uh, there's one thing I tell my band members. The sky is big enough for us all to fly. And the moment we see life in that aspect, we do not have to worry about anybody. When you believe in you, when you see you as you, nobody can be you, you are you. So actually I believe we all have our different styles. We all have God, God, God created us with different styles, different talents, different ideas. It might be similar, but there is one thing. There's a particular uniqueness that God created everyone with. So it has been like that from the beginning. Like we hear this, we even tell God for our own time, because I don't know if they still do it because I don't have the experience where they, you know, we want to sing before we plug. Mm -hmm. We've had different stories. So yeah. we thank God that at least in our time, it has not been like that. But the competition is so strong that but Queen Madiba is the one man will go. <laughs> and me and God is with me. So I really don't care about who is competing with who. And I'm not in competition with anybody. And I will never be because you cannot be me, I can never be you. That is my philosophy. Now, every musician has a role model. He or she is looking up to. So, what are you looking up to in the music industry? Uh, oh, first and foremost, I look up to God. Because God is the giver of talent, and sincerely, I won't lie. I I started with Afro pop, so then I used to be like I like Beyonce's performance, you know. I watch her a lot, especially her life, and that was what inspired me to you know start live music. So in the African space, every successful woman in that field are people I look up to. Because I want to get there, I want to supersede them, not in a bad way, but then I'm always looking up to you know, climbing that ladder of success to get to where they are. Okay, maybe I should ask the question this way. Um, who would you like to have a collaboration with in the next um, few? See, I want to have a collaboration with everybody. In my head, I. Okay, this morning I just. When we are coming in the car, I felt, oh, why not do a collaboration with a Tiwa, a Shereshe, a DC, that, a that, a this, like how the female music, uh, all the female uh, musicians in one track, and it might be longer because you know, we have about, I think, about 10 female musicians. Like, I'm looking at the possibility of having them all together in the song with me. And that's just like my idea, just something I thought about this morning. I've never won. My husband is here for the first time. So I want to have a collaboration with every successful musician, every female musician, because it's not easy being a female, not to talk about being a female musician, because it's fine, Jory. Ah, go there first. I was also going to ask Chris um, the kind of music you sing and the way you sing your music, 
must be a very tasking one because I have to show you can do the jewel, fuji, amala. It just flows as the spirit leads and all that. What does it take from you in terms of preparation for you to be able to deliver um, excellence at the show in terms of cutting across English, Yoruba, Igbo if possible, the Queen, well, of everything? And I'm just wondering, how do you prepare for this kind of? Uh, it has been gone and a lot of hard work and commitment. There are times where I randomly wake up and most of the time I, I set the target. When I started, I, I had a three months non-stop rehearsal. I was like, no shows, nothing, nothing. I was in the studio, I, I, I rehearsed twice a week. And when I'm not rehearsing, I'm in front of the mirror holding my brush and giving them the, you know, um, we making a Rihanna, we making a Nicki Minaj, we making a Beyonce. And when I want to do juju or high life, I go as far as trying to do the step of Sonia. And you know, I want to. Most time, I put myself in the character of the artist that I'm actually performing is or a song. So it has been a lot of commitment, anyways, hard work and prayers, plenty prayers. But there are times you realize the song and you get on stage, the anxiety. Might make you panic, might make you forget your lights, make you forget you have a list of songs. You just see that you're just shaking, or, or one person is looking at you, you know, I am like, ah, I'm in trouble today. So it's just a lot of hard, hard work, commitment, and prayers. Um, I picking up from where Publisher stopped, let me ask. I was at um, the Awardees uh, 50th birthday, okay. where you performed, and you gave him your very best back-to-back. -back. And I was like, wow, this young lady is it's wonderful. There were other musicians that came, that did their thing and all. But then I realized that um, you have this dual personality. The, you are a different person on stage when you are performing. You are a different person when you are talking or relating with people. How do you manage to balance the two personalities? Okay, let me let me add a bit. Different person on stage, very relating and a individual. Okay, so um, like I said when I was coming, in, my Madiba is. I'm a shy person. People don't. Know. There are times I meet people and I'm like, ah, what will I say? But when I'm on stage, I don't know. I think that is where I'm. I'm most happy because. The moment I see that mic, it's always like ah, something was happening to me. Like, there's this anointing, the Holy Spirit is just enter inside me, and I'm like, ah, there must take to do to do to But then, I, when I'm on stage, there's this ginger, and I think it's just cause given. Because there are times I might have a bad mood, I might leave home angry, I might probably have issues with my engineers, even my band members. But the moment I pick up the mic to start, they know. They know oh if my diva is angry. The moment I'm singing and you're giving me what I want behind me, ah, I don't even remember you've offended me. I might dance with you all be on stage, and that's just how God created me.